case for a real client, it's probably not going to be that. Um, why is this started as a context of spiders and not something else? How is a client lost for words to try and explain it? How is it possible that someone can think about something and get the same feelings as if they were standing in front of it? These are all signs that we need to be curious about. How is this humanly possible? Yeah. And as soon as we get to that, the conscious mind says, you know what, fuck this. I don't know where this is going. I'm going to leave for a while and you two have a chat. Yeah. Okay. So let's, um, let's, does, does that make sense where that ended up? Yeah, because, because if not, I'm just, I'm just consciously, we're just playing table tennis. Mm -hmm. You know, it's backwards and forwards over the net and, and we're just not getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. I need to be, I need to be curious with that, yes. with that unconscious mind. Yes. Every time. And, if you find um, the conversation going around in circles, you just need to listen closely to everything they're saying. To, you've got to think like this, and this helps helps me a lot as well, is um, when your client is uh, talking to you, especially in the conscious mind, everything should line up. Everything should make sense to a certain degree. Yeah, There should be no ifs, ands, or, or, or buts. It should be just clear conversation from start to finish. But as soon as you hear something, a concept they put together like, um, you know what, Michael, um, I've never believed that the sky was blue because I know only orange exists in this world. When you hear something like that, you've got to sit back and think, hang on, what the hell do you mean by that? Like, what are you trying to tell me right there? Because in my world, that's definitely not the case. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in the case of this client, when a client's saying, I'm feeling something, but I can't explain it, you need to think to yourself, hang on, in my world, that's not the case because I can explain all my feelings. And it's through investigating yeah. that part there that'll open up into something really, really nice. Yeah, because I'm, I'm wondering, how do you do that? Exactly. And that's the curiosity of the mind seller. How, does, how do you do that? How do you make that, that um, how do you have that understanding? And... Do you actually hear what you're telling me right now? You're telling me you have a feeling, but you can't find the words to explain it. Now, for people listening into this conversation you and me are having right now, they'd be thinking, well, what has this got to do with hypnosis? Well, it's what? got everything to do it's, with it. It's got the only thing to do with it because what we're doing is we're finding a, a hitch in someone's logic because that's where the unconscious moment sits. The unconscious moment glues those things together. Okay. So let, let's start again. Let's pick another client. Let's pick a client that is, um, let's try this one. Um, I'm afraid of eating steak or I'm afraid of eating meat. Let's try this one. This is a, an obscure one. Let's see where we go. Well, what, how did you, how did you come up with this? Um, well, Michael, when about two years ago, I was at a barbecue and I was eating a steak and I actually choked and nearly died. And ever since then, I can't even look at, you know, steak or red meat. It just freaks me out. Wow. How do you... I've got to congratulate you because you've, you've got such an awesome protection mechanism that it gives you warning before you even get there. Yes. Absolutely. That's like an early warning device. Well <laughs> done. So it's a bit like, I don't know, tell me if I'm wrong here. One vitamin C is good for you. Ten must be ten times as good. Is that right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Well, Maybe, maybe your unconscious mind has grabbed this and thought, whoa, we don't want to go there. Hmm. Mm. So, yeah. What do, we, what do we do with this one? It's a strange one. I know. <laughs> it is a strange one. So because. What hasn't he told us yet? How 
how how how he's managed to relate it how he's how he's put that and that together and now all he's got to do is think about it and it's all that's going to happen again yeah definitely so, part of it. what else hasn't he told us i'm just wondering whether it was was it actually you know was it actually the meat that caused it mm -hmm. or was it the way he ate the meat mm -hmm. was it the way you know was it just the environment mm -hmm. was what else happened yeah so even before that that'd be definitely worth investigating what else what else haven't we uh hasn't he told us yet because all we basically know so far is he's afraid of red meat because he choked. Yeah. So are you not curious about why the hell is he here? What does he actually want to get from this? Does he actually want to go back to eating meat? Does he want to learn how to get a bigger throat so he never chokes again? Well, these are things we need to find out first. Mm. Okay, so let's pick it up from there. Let's see what he actually wants from the session. Yeah, So, so before all this happened, how were you with me? Um, I was fine. Well, fine. Did you like it? Yeah, I loved it. Loved it. Mm. It's pretty hard when you love something and then you've got to stop. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What I'm curious about is how how rapidly you can go cold turkey on something. Mm -hmm. Even before we start asking those questions, we still need to find out what is he here for? We still don't know this. Mm. So you, you obviously want to, want to cure this fear of meat. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. So now, now we need to find some motivation. So we've got to find out us. We never, never feel um, wrong. I used to do this a lot and I'm in mean a lot was if I had no idea where this session was going or what they're trying to tell me or what they're not telling me, I'd just basically ask them straight up, what do you want from today's session? Because I'm not following. Mm. And they'll give you the exact motivation or the exact reason why they need to quit or move forward or do this or that. So, so Scott, if you never ate meat again, mm -hmm. what would be wrong with that? Um, well... I get, I get invited to a lot of barbecues and I feel left out and I feel strange saying I can't eat red meat. Uh, so it's it's not the fact that you're not eating it. No. Uh, Still like to eat it, but I feel left out. What I'm curious about is how come a strange reaction to what people say could be worse than a reaction of choking. Uh, How, you know, I mean, you you obviously got to a point where you've unconsciously you've learned you've learned how to how to um, deal with choking. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's a bit like. Oh, that car came close to me. I'll never get in the car again. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. No, it's just I, I just worry that if um, if I can't go to these barbecues, I'm going to lose all my friends. Ah, so so you're worried about losing your friends? Yeah. Hmm. So, are your friends, um, I'm sort of curious, are your friends, are your friends the sort of friends that, um, just like to, you know, like to have a bit of fun with you or, or is this, um, or are they the sort of friends that would be concerned about you? 
Um, I don't know. I just don't want to have that discussion. It's sort of awkward. I don't know. It's, I just worry that, you know, when someone says come to a barbecue right now, if someone asks me, I'd make every excuse not to go because I'm worried I'm going to choke again. And then people are going to feel or say things about me or just make me feel bad because it's not normal. Yeah. It's not normal. Hmm. So is it the not normal feeling that makes you feel uncomfortable? Or is it the or is it the not being not being the most popular kid on the block that makes you uncomfortable? Um yeah, I would just hate for this to rule my friendships. You know, mm-hmm. what guy can't go to a barbecue? It's just, uh, 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 just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't it's, make sense. No, and it's frustrating because I'm trying to work it out. And just, I don't know. I would just wish, I, I would just wish it never happened. Wish it never happened. So sitting here and and understanding understanding what you know about what you know how would you how would you set it up differently excellent back that question up just a little bit remember he, he's not going to have an answer to that as far as no, um, not in um, an unconscious way but the reason he's going to be here or the reason he is here is because he can't work that part out yep so get more curious about it um and then hopefully he'll come up with if this is this is a strange session to be in because it's yeah. giving you a lot of uh, what I call dead ends, as mm. if you know. Every time he answers a question for you, he knows the, he already gives you the reason why your question doesn't what work. Would, yeah. Okay. So let's have a good think about it. What are we curious about? I'm just wondering how you know that your friends are going to react that way. Excellent. Good place to start, right? Yeah. Um, why would that be so important? Well, if you think they're always going to behave that way, then then your the natural pre- protection mechanism is to not go there, mm-hmm. right? But they're already onto it mm-hmm. and said, "Well, you know." Come along to the barbecue. Oh shit! Oh no! Now I've got to be there. Yeah. Um. 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 Yeah. Try and get uh, out of it. Yes. Oh shit! Is is this excuse going to work? Yeah. Um, um. Um. Oh no! If I do that excuse, then then they'll only make fun of me. Yep. If I don't go to the barbecue, they're going to make fun of me. Oh shit! This is going pear shaped. Yeah. Right. So I'm just. What what really intrigues me now is how how you can't just bite the bullet and go, you know what? I really don't want to be there because you blokes make fun of me all the time. Yeah. Right? But you know, I've now wound myself into a position where mm-hmm. Damn, I've got to do something about this. Yep. Right? Because now what seemed like a really good excuse at the time mm-hmm. has now blown into something that, oh shit, now I can't get out of it. Yeah. Now I'm carrying all this other stuff with it. Yep. Absolutely. We've got to start to think um, 
in terms of, and you're hundred percent correct, you know, um, what's his, what's his perception of friends? Are these, what's he actually working towards? Because let's say he solves this, are his friends still an asshole to him? Is this something he's not telling us? Is he that person in every group that gets picked on? And although they say it's a joke, it really affects him, you know, being one of those yeah. kids. What, what is so important about keeping these friends? Why doesn't he go somewhere else? What's, has he not got, for lack of better words, the balls to say, you know what, that happened. If someone says, eat a steak and gives me grief for it, who cares? I'll just shrug it off. Yeah. So we've well, got to think, what's so important about his status in the friendship? What's so important about keeping these friends? You know, if they are going to make fun of him, what's the point of having these friends around? And these are all places where this person's going to be caught. Mm. Cause so, yeah, I'm, I'm just, where's the, where's the reward in feeling like yeah. shit if they're your friends? Yeah. Let's say he does overcome this, goes through a session with us, experience a little bit of pain and we cure it. Does he go back to his friends and they don't even remember that it happened in the first place? So while he was maybe looking to be that person that everyone feels sorry for and get something from it, you know, some attention unconsciously, he goes there and his friends go, oh, yeah, we've got all about that. Who cares? Why do you care about it? So what's he going through all this, uh, all this uh, effort anguish. for? Yeah. yeah. When he could find other friends, not go through the anguish of it or even the thought about it, they're going to give me grief about it, go find some other friends and never has to reveal it to people. So this goes far beyond the idea of choking and the idea of eating red meat. That's just his conclusion. Mm. You know, red meat is going to kill me. That's his conclusion. But we know it's not that because we're going to think, what's all this? And this, that's just one place to explore. What's this thing? What is he? Why is he holding this group of friends in such high regards if he maybe thinks they're still going to give him grief about it anyway, even if he solves it? Yeah, I mean, the... My my thought process earlier mm -hmm. was how how do you, how do you know they're going to react like that? Yeah, they could be quite compassionate and go, "Oh my God, yeah, chew your food, you're an animal." Yeah, <laughs> you know, if you put it in too big, it's going to get you. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, there's there's, huh? there's there's three ways his friends could take it. Either they become really compassionate. Which means that's a great group of friends, so he gets some yeah. attention, so that's a good thing. Um, his friends just go, oh my God, are you still talking about that? Get over it. Who cares? Yeah. And then he doesn't get the compassion. Or his friends totally forget, and while by reminding them, they start to give him grief about it because they totally forgot about it. Yeah. Either way, aside from the compassionate friends, um, the other two ways are working against him. So he's got all this effort to change something about him just based on what his friends might think. What a weird situation to be in. And unfortunately, we all, we're all like that. Well, you know, it happens to us all at various course, stages. Yeah. And, and what I'm curious about is how our mind finally works out. Yeah. Man, that's not a road to go down. Yeah. <laughs> what is the mind actually getting, you know, the twisted thinking of the unconscious sometimes to actually conclude that it's going to get something from all of this but not reveal it to the and not reveal it to the person themselves or our client. That's a strange place to be in. Mm. Okay, so let's start again. Um, does that make sense? Just on, on on that front, it's it's basically to find what's the motivation towards um, the negative outcome that could still possibly happen if you overcome this. All based on thoughts, anyway. You know, like um, the next time I get into a car, I think I'm going to have a crash. So I'm going to have a car phobia now. Yeah. All based on thoughts. Okay. So let's uh, let's start again. Um, let's start with Michael. I um, I need to lose weight, but I know it's next to impossible because I've been told uh, by my doctor that I have an an underactive thyroid. Oh. Wow. Wow. I'm I'm trying not to go into story mode at the yeah, moment. I know. Because, you yeah. know, you know. Neil Armstrong walked on the moon and plenty of people said that was impossible. That's so it. where
what I'm curious about is what your perception of weight is. Mm-hmm. Um, like I know I want to lose it because I'm uncomfortable. I'd like to lose 50 kilos, but I just, I know it's going to be so difficult because my doctors have said it is. Ah. So what brings you here? Excellent question. I'm glad you picked that up. Um, I'm just hoping that maybe they're wrong. Well, that's a, that's a good point to be in or a good place to be in because you can't, you can't have one without the other, can you? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And what, what else has got me curious is... Do you even know what your thyroid is? Um, yeah, my doctor explained it to me. And basically what he said is me losing weight is going to be very, very slow. I may as well just be happy the way I am. Mm. Happy the way you are. But you're not happy the way you are, are you? No. I, um, I understand it's going to be difficult and I'm willing to accept that. But I've still got to try something. Okay. So you've... you've taken the first step because mm-hmm. right? you're here yeah right and you've been to the doctor right so you made the effort to go there yes so as far as steps are concerned you're already on the way yes are you not yes so what I'm curious about now, is what's changed in order to get you stepping in the right direction. Excellent. And pause right there. Excellent. What do we know so far? Well, we know that he's that there's a um, there's a uh, he's been to see the doctor. Correct. And the doctor said. No, this isn't going to happen because you've got an underactive thyroid, right? Live with it. Yep. And huh? I, I'll, I'll pause right there because I think this is an important point to make. Do you see what can happen with your clients when it comes to authority? Yeah. Well, he's already he's he's gone the next step because yep. he said I don't believe him. Yep. Do you see how huh? easy a client can make their their can justify things based on authority, which is why I yep. really preach to you guys why having authority is so important because you want to outdo another authority. So let's say your client turns up stating they've been to a doctor and authority this and authority that, and they turn up to your office and it's dirty. You got bad clothes on, you didn't iron your shirt. You smell like you've just had a cigarette. It looks like you rushed off your feet. That authority you're trying to build just counteracts things. Absolutely. They start to believe their doctor more and they start to think of you as a bad mistake. Mm. So you want your client to walk in and still say, you know what, the authority of the doctor, that's fine. We can't fix that. But are hoping by the time they come and see you, they think, wow, Michael speaks really professional. His office looks great. Maybe he's got just as much or more authority. So I guess if I can believe a doctor with authority, I guess I could believe Michael as well because he has authority as well, which makes your session a lot easier. Mm. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So what else do we know? So we know that they they believed the doctor based on authority. The chances of them knowing anything more about their health than when they started is nil to irrelevant because doctors yeah. don't explain it. They just say this is this is law. This is written in stone. Believe me, because I'm a yeah. doctor. Okay. So what else do we know? So we know we know that he's not that he's not a hundred percent on what the doctors said. Yep. Yeah. Right. And. In his own mind, he knows that it's not going to happen overnight. Yep. Right? So I'm what I'm curious about is we know that we're not going to lose 50 kilos like that unless we cut both legs off. So yep. what length of time would would it need to be for you to feel comfortable in in a weight loss? 
Excellent. So it's one avenue to go down. What else can we do? It'd definitely take us somewhere. What else can we be curious about? Because, you know, the question you asked before, I think is a brilliant question, because if your client turns around and says, well, I want to go on by tomorrow, you know, their perception on how physics works and how the world works really doesn't compute. So yeah. there might be a lot of adjustment that needs to be done. Yeah. So what, what other avenue could we take? Or what else could we get curious about? So what is it about this weight loss that's, um, that's really concerning you? Excellent. So now we find out some motivation. Maybe what they haven't told us is the doctor said if you, you know, although you're not going to be able to lose weight because of your thyroid, um, I just want to let you know as well, you'll probably die in two years. Mm. But maybe our client just doesn't want to tell us that. Okay. Um, yeah. So now we've got some hidden motivation. So it'd be another great question. So what, what else could we do? So this... Um... Hey, you, well, you you feel uncomfortable in the size that you are. Mm -hmm. What what size do you think you'd need to be to feel comfortable? Excellent. So again, and, we get more motivation. Yeah, and and is it you that has to feel comfortable, mm -hmm. or is it you feeling comfortable around other people? Excellent. Okay, so now we find out the conclusions they've made, or the mm -hmm. the incorrect conclusions they've made. Um, what I'm curious about is why is it how is it possible that a client can come into our office and state this michael um, my doctor has said this and i'm telling you what they've told you told me so i must believe them at some level but i'm hoping they're wrong why is it they've got to a point where they started to doubt the authority mm. there's obviously something inside them that's more power than powerful than, than the authority even if it's just a small glimmer of hope, we need to find out what is that. Yeah. Because we could, you know, to 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 swap roles is to say to a client, it just in regards to this situation, say, well, you've been to, I've assumed, doctors before and you've believed everything they've said, yeah? Well, yeah, you know, I've been sick, I've done this, I've done that. So, you know, there's obviously a reason you're here. Why have you doubted your doctor enough in order to get this done? Because hopefully from this, and it's not the words that are essential, it's just the intention of where we're going, I need to find out, or we need to find out as a hypnotist, what is that small percentage that makes you think that there's a possibility you could do it regardless of what the doctor says? That's what I want to find out. Mm -hmm. Because that's where, the real, that's where the real juicy stuff's going to come out. You know, it could come out to say, you know what, Michael, I went to this doctor and... Um, but I remember going to the same doctor two years ago and he said at that time it would be easy for me to lose weight and now he's saying it's not going to be easy. I'm really confused. So the weight loss has to come later. The Sorry, the weight session, the weight loss session has to come later. We need to find out why have they gone over the top of their doctor's head. You know, a second opinion or a third opinion is great. Yep. But... Why has this happened? What's the small glimmer of hope they're holding on to? Because that's all mm -hmm. our client needs, don't they? We well, we sell an intangible object, don't we? It's not a physical yeah, the, thing. The thought, the thought comes before the action. Yeah. You know, when I go so, to buy a new car, I don't buy it and then never get the car. And they say, well, we'll have it to you eventually. I want the car then and there because that's what I've paid for. So in regards to hypnosis, we're selling an intangible object that's based on hope. A client hopes that Michael, the hypnotist, can help me, although there are, I believe there's only about a half a percent chance that he can. But maybe that's enough just to try something, regardless of what the doctors and the experts say. Yeah. You see the conscious and unconscious at that point? Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the curiosity and thinking we need to have. Yeah, we and need, it's, a, need, it's, the key, the yes. it's the key to open that door. Yeah, and it's a small keyhole. Got a mm. big key, but something very, very small. It's like trying to unlock your door in the dark. Mm. You've got to feel it with the other hand to find out where the lock, then you've got to find the right key. It takes a while, but it's what we're looking for is where does the logic break down in someone's conversation? Where does the logic break down in someone's excuses? Where does the logic break down um, in regards to the context of a client? Where does it break down in regards to their affliction? Like um, Michael. I, 
I can't stop sneezing because when I was young, um, my mother ran over my cat. What has one got to do with the other? Wow. <laughs> okay, you know what I mean? That's yeah. the things we need to hear. But what happens is it gets lost in all this logical stuff. Like, yeah. I can't quit smoking. I can't lose weight because the doctor said so. But through investigation, this weird little concept comes out that should hit you in the face that says you need to almost back up and go, whoa, slow down a minute. What are you trying to tell me? What do palm trees have to do with red pens? That's what I'm not following. And that's where they're caught, but they don't realize they're caught in that. If you undo that loop, you undo that logic and you find where it's illogical, as Spock would say, yeah. um, that's the key. That's what opens up to these big aha moments. That's what releases clients quickly. It's like the loop they're stuck in has a little speed bump in it, but they don't know they're hitting a speed bump every time. But the speed mm. bump keeps telling them there's the bump, but they don't recognize it because I think it's just a part of it. Yeah. It's like if you have um, where, where, my, um, where I have my apartment, there are speed bumps on the road to stop people driving fast down down the street because it's a um, it's a you know a, a private um, uh, place where I live. Yeah. But over time, when I first drove here, I drove very slowly over them because I didn't know what the depth of them was. I didn't know how I was going to go with my car or those sorts of things. But now, I know I'm going over it, but it's almost like I don't feel it because I've driven over them so many times. It becomes a part of it. Yep. But if I go away to go teach in another state, I come back. It's like I start all over again. I notice the bump we're showing the client the bump they're stuck on. So the loop um, either becomes um, 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 smooth in a fact, or they just recognize that, hey, there's something to this that I've forgotten about. Does that make sense just as a metaphor? Yes, it does. Um, and this this is all we do as far as being curious. A lot of students go saying, well, what's the point of being curious? If you stay curious, you hear these things. And the more you hear them, the more obvious they become. You can almost hear between your client's words. Yeah, just, I'm, just by my unconscious out. is my yeah. unconscious is playing back. Yeah. <laughs> at the moment, trying to trying to look for that look for that gap. Yes, that yes, it is the gap. What is what they what they're telling me right now? What our clients tell us is all linear. It's all straight facts and figures. But mm. every now and then, we know logic breaks down. Where does it break down? What concept are they giving you that in your world doesn't make sense? That's what you need to question. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking, but you know, my doctor said it's gonna this is the outcome, but I'm here. Exactly. Yeah. Um to to extend on your metaphor, when the unconscious mind is saying, Yes, I'm here. If only it would speak to us like the conscious mind does, but instead it gives us, I don't even look at it as little cues anymore, a uh, clues, sorry, with a CL clues. I look yep. at it as that's the best way it can tell you what it's feeling. It's so abstract in the way it thinks, it's abstract in the way it communicates to you. It won't tell you straight out, hey, Michael, you need to question this because this doesn't make sense. It just gives you little bits and pieces because that's the only way it knows how. Yeah. And we just now, if the unconscious mind thinks and talks like that, we need to think and talk like that too. Absolutely. It's the only way to connect. This goes beyond rapport. This goes beyond using someone's senses, their words, this. When you start to think like the unconscious mind does in very abstract ways, um, logical uh, mistakes in people's communication become so obvious. And just by giving it back to a client saying, hey, you just told me this. Does this really make sense to you? Is enough where they sit back and go, wow, shit, I can't believe I just said that. That makes no sense. Bang, you've got them in an unconscious moment. Mm. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So if you consider where you were when we started, they're very, they're very similar concepts we talked about on our first couple of trainings. But what I'm noticing now is you're not so stuck in where they might be. You're recognizing them more. Yeah. Um if I preempt anything, then I'm on the wrong track. There you go. As soon as you do that. As soon, you know, um, it's it's no different to saying, okay, well, I'm going to approach it in this manner. Exactly. As soon as you start to uh, preempt or start to think, oh, hang on, they're trying to tell me this, but I'm not going to test it. I'm just going to assume I'm right. 
you go down the wrong path and you keep hitting your own speed bump while they're hitting their speed bump. Yeah. If you're not sure about what they're talking about, you need to ask them. Even if it's a dumb question, you need to ask them. It's going to be crystal clear. Any questions? No, I'm just... That's a good answer. Just let it absorb. Mm, I'm... I'm just, I'm picking out all the good bits. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, it's, it's something that we've talked about from day one, but the more I reiterate it with you and the more we go over the, the more we beat a dead horse to death, if you want to use a horrible metaphor, yeah. um, the more it becomes appropriate. I want these things to stand out to you so much yeah. that an alarm bell goes off in your head when you hear it and it, to the point where I noticed what would happen with me I almost had to um, stop myself laughing because it was so obvious and the things people tried to tell me or things people told me that didn't realise they say would be so comical to me because it was like 90% of the stuff I didn't hear it was like I went deaf but then this was like an instant punch in the face and how, how could I not question it and that's when you go from doing one or two hour sessions to you know 10 or 15 minute super sessions that people are just floored by and don't realize how you've done it because they're, they're not looking for the same things or cannot recognize the same things you do and that's a skill in itself mm. all right so let that absorb 